return to the surface. And thank you for choosing Vault Tech. Welcome guys, my name is Matthias, and yes, this is the best Fallout 4 modded playthrough in 2020 with a bunch of immersive, immersive <laughs> mods, and yes, oh this is day two. In today's video, we are going to be focusing on Sanctuary um, solely, okay? So we are going to be doing everything that you can do in Sanctuary before you go and save the Minutemen. Um, from the Raiders and we are going to be covering everything that we need to do in Sanctuary you know to complete that area and then in later on videos we'll expand on it you know make it more homely and um, add a lot of items you know to our house that's just you know that just adds a lot more to the playthrough um, one very interesting thing that I'm going to add to my room is a bench press which is going to give me um, extra strength that I don't know if you guys knew about that, but I don't know about that. But yes, the beginning of the next playthrough, um, we're going to wake up and do some bench presses early in the morning um, to give us one strength. And um, in between, I'll do some research um, how long that lasts for and if there are any other um, objects that I can place in my house you know, and I am going to live in Sanctuary, uh, but I'm going to see if there's any other items that I can place in my house that, you know, could maybe boost our stats like um, the bench press does, which is quite, quite cool. But in any case, yes, like I said, we are going to be focusing on Sanctuary today. So we're on our way to Codsworth to talk to him a bit. He's going to be very glad to see us. And then what we are going to be doing is two major steps. Firstly, we are going to be looting Sanctuary completely. Okay, I want you guys to take your time with this. Um, make sure you loot absolutely everything in Sanctuary. Make sure you leave no stone unturned. When it comes to secrets, at the back of one of the houses, which I'm going to show you, is a cellar with a lot of cool loot. And on top of the roof, you can use a log to get to a duffel bag on top of the roof. And then we're going to loot the guy that's just lying outside of Sanctuary to get um, 10 damage reduction. And yeah, just get the um, tire iron from the dog because that's going to be basically our best melee weapon um, that we're going to start with. And then we're going to get the duffel bag there as well. Okay. Um, but yes, looting the entire place and not leaving any stone unturned is going to be very, very important in the beginning. As I live and breathe, oh, it's, it's really you. Codsworth. What happened to the world? The world, sir? Well, Besides our geranium still being the envy of Sanctuary Hills, I'm afraid things have been dreadfully dull around here. Things will be so much more exciting with you and Mrs. Beck. Where is your better half, by the by? They came into the vault. Maybe you saw them, armed, wearing strange outfits. <clears throat> Only Miss Rose's boy running around in his Halloween costume, more than a week early. I swear, the nerve of that woman leaving her brat unsupervised. Ha <laughs> ha, not like this family, sir. You and the missus have always been such a responsible couple. Oh, where is she, by the by? They... They killed her. Sir, these things you're saying, these, these terrible things, I, I believe you need a distraction. Yes, a distraction to calm this dire mood. It's been ages since we've had a proper family activity. Checkers, or perhaps charades. Sean does so love that game. <laughs> Is the lad uh, with you? Sean's been kidnapped. 
But I'm going to find him. I'm going to get my son back. It's worse than I thought. <clears throat> You're suffering from hunger-induced paranoia. Not eating properly for 200 years will do that, I'm afraid. <laughs> 200 years? What? Are you... A bit over 210, actually, sir. Or oh, give or take a little. For the Earth's rotation and some minor dings to the old chronometer. <laughs> that means you're uh, two centuries late for dinner. <laughs> Perhaps I can whip you up a snack? <laughs> you must be famished. Codsworth, you're acting... a little weird. What's wrong? I... I... Oh, sir, it's been just horrible. Two centuries with no one to talk to, no one to serve. I spent the first ten years trying to keep the floors waxed, but nothing gets out nuclear fallout from vinyl wood. <laughs> nothing! And don't get me started about the futility of dusting a collapsed house. <laughs> and the car, the car, how do you polish rust? Stay with me, pal. Focus. Uh, I'm afraid I don't know anything, sir. The bombs came and all of you left in such a hurry. I thought for certain you and your family were dead. I did find this hollow tape. I, I believe the missus was going to present it to you as a, as a surprise. But then, well, everything happened. Thank you, Codsworth. You're, you're welcome. Now, enough feeling sorry for myself. Shall we search the neighborhood together? The missus and young Sean may turn up yet. Have you seen anything dangerous? Oh, just the usual, sir. Pesky neighborhood dogs and mosquitoes. Shall I investigate? There's nothing left here. It's all gone. Well, if you wish to venture to parts unknown, I won't stop you. I shall guard the neighborhood in your absence. Okay guys, the reason that I took the second option instead of the last option is I don't want Codsworth to clear out the two houses for me because if I don't do enough damage to the AI or to the flies, then he gets the, ex or I don't get the experience, okay? And experience is going to be very, very important in the beginning. Um, you will level up fast in the beginning, but every single point counts because the longer you play, the more experience it will take to level up, okay? And leveling up is going to be a very important part of the game. Um, and of course, because we're not going to use any companions, because companions can't die, which makes the game very, very unrealistic and way too easy. So we are going to take Lone Wanderer, and we're not even going to take um, Dogmeat with us because he can die, you know, in real life as well. So we're not going to risk his life, even though he can't, um, you know, because he's an essential NPC. We're not going to take him with us to keep the immersion going. And then, yeah, um, we might use him to transport, you know, a few items with us to other locations because he has got carry weight. So we might take him, you know, with us if we want to um, take some loot to new locations. But of course, Lone Wanderer gives us 15% less damage, which helps a lot, and an additional 50 in carry weight, which is, you know, absolutely essential for a solo playthrough. Now, I am going to kill these flies, and I'm going to use vats as little as possible, guys. Like I said in the first playthrough, I will only be using vats when I know I've got about a 95% chance to hit them, and that will basically just be animals and stuff, like right here. Now there I don't have a 95% chance, but 
you guys get the point, okay? When when animals are very, very close to me, that's the only time I'll be using using vats for a bit of movie magic. And again, you know, I want to show you guys everything that Fallout has to offer in a as much of a vanilla experience as possible. But I've got a lot of immersive mods installed, which doesn't break the mechanics at all, doesn't give me any advantage. And um, the only thing um, that's quite a big um, mod is the immersive mods, okay? There's a mod on the Nexus Mod Manager, which make, which has researched realistic mods. Um, their explosion based on a one, mil one liter bottle. Um, and yes, unfortunately, Fallout or Bethesda made it so that Molotovs work like grenades, which is extremely unrealistic and is quite game breaking because there is um how can i say this uh, yeah because there are invisible walls okay so let's say i threw a molotov through this door now and um, even if i have the arc like on demolitions 2 you'll you'll have an arc to throw the molotov but even though your arc will show you that it's not going to hit anything, it can hit invisible borders, just like your bullets can hit invisible borders. And then the Molotov explodes in your face and kills you instantly, okay? Which has been a big frustration for many survival mode players. And that's why I installed the mod, okay? Because the immersive mod uh, makes it so that Molotovs do energy damage, which is... Um, much better and then flamethrowers will do energy damage as well and the bottle itself and um, doesn't do any damage it's basically the um gasoline you know that gets poured over you um which is burning and that will so the initial hit won't damage us but over time it will kill us and if we throw um raiders or your yeah, humans with a molotov they will run away or freak out okay which is very very realistic no one's going to stand still while they're burning. But it works both ways. Even if they hit us with the Molotov, we're going to have to run as well because we are going to be on fire. And over time, it's still going to do a heck of a lot of damage. So we are going to have to focus on our energy resistance for the Molotovs. And then the other, the other thing is you can use Molotovs tactically now to block off entrances because humans um, won't just walk through the flames, okay? But, of course, mutants, you know, and synths and stuff like that, they not and ghouls, they're not going to worry about the flames, and they're not going to run away, okay, when they're on fire. So, yeah, definitely one of the biggest playthroughs, and like I'm showing you here, this is the cellar at the back. It's very late at night, so I basically just built a bed for myself, and your sleep schedule is very, very important. You want to sleep for at least 10 hours every single day, um, at the same time at night and I've got darker nights installed which helps me to realize when it is night or when it is late because if you don't have darker nights you know you don't really know and if you guys want the best setting the light version just below the medium version okay is definitely the best I've tested all of those settings and yes um, that's about the uh, only extra mods I added from my last playthrough, the immersive mods and the darker nights. And then, of course, yeah, if you're well rested, it gives you plus two endurance and plus two agil agility on survival mode. And yeah, the, the big thing that broke my pre previous playthroughs was the fact that, I'm, that I made it, I added a line to the Fallout I and I file which made it so that all NPCs can die. So there's no essential NPCs. Now, although that's a fantastic addition for um, a bad character, you know, like if you want to play a bad guy and kill everyone, it's absolutely fantastic if you're not worried about the story in mode. But because I want to experience the game, you know, completely, all the storylines, all the quests, you know, and immerse myself completely, um, it just breaks too many storylines. Like, I, like um, when I got to got dance, he was just dead from the ghouls, okay? So he would have never survived the synth attack, you know, which he takes me on on the first mission. And I just thought to myself, if Dan's, you know, with power armor can die so quickly, 
you know, it's going to be very easy for me to lose all the other quests as well, because my settlement is going to be attacked, and then, you know, that attack can kill all the Minutemen. So, first of all, Dance is dead, so the Brotherhood storyline is gone. And then secondly, the, um, you know, if m my settlement gets attacked and the Minutemen die, then the Minutemen's settlement storyline is gone as well. And then later down the line, something can happen which breaks the um, railroad storyline, you know, and then all we've got left is killing stuff, you know, which would have been a very unimmersive. But I give you my word, this is going to be the complete playthrough, you know, and for all of you that have watched the pre previous playthroughs, if I do not finish the entire game and show you guys exactly what I said I was going to show you, the perfect way to play Fallout 4 and all the DLCs, then, you know, you don't have to watch any of my videos ever again and I'll, and you can dislike, you know, every single video I make from this point on. So, I give you my word that the Molotovs were a major problem with invisible walls and the non-essential NPCs was a major problem. But if you want to play a bad character, um, just hit me, hit me up on Discord. I will tell you what you should add to your INI nice. file. And if you really want an easy way to just kill everything, I'll show you how you can make it so that the NPCs or the AI uses the ammo that's on them, okay? So that they can't throw you with 20 Molotovs or something. But that is a bit, you know, overdoing it, but it's your option. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so basically we've looted everything, we've scrapped everything, all the houses are clear, okay, it's ready for us to expand and make, you know, our home beautiful again. And yeah, like you saw there, there was a medic um, box in that toilet, but we got the loot and, you know, we probably got the screws from the medic kits as well. When you've looted the safes, um, you know, to get the experience, scrap the safe because it's going to give you screws and scrap any medic box or toolbox, you know, that you've looted because that's going to give you screws as well, which is going to help you a heck of a lot. Now, because this episode is completely focused on sanctuary, we're only going to add the cherries to the cake, you know, later on, making it really, you know, making our town really good looking and our house something impressive. But at the moment, we just want to prepare a sanctuary for the Minutemen, okay? Instead of us running up and down, um, you know, um, taking the things that they want us to do, you know, like adding water, you know, going back and talking to them, adding this, adding that. I am doing everything that they are going to ask of me. So when I save them, they come back here, I can just talk, you know, I can just talk to them and all the quests would have already been done regarding water food defenses and beds okay so that's what we're going to do now so because i've got the game of the year we have got a few extra building options and concrete um foundations are one of them so i put the water generator in there and now i'm just going to place a small generator you don't um you can even use the you know, you don't have to use the second one. This um, water purifier only takes two power. And the first generator gives you three power. So that's more than enough. And always look at your resources that you're using, okay, when you build something. Like, I see a lot of guys building turrets um, for defenses. And that, that uses material which you need for weapon upgrades, okay? So it's very important not to waste your materials like that. But in any case, you know, I'm trying to enjoy myself and you know, put the power conductors facing the right way and I'm putting this generator in the corner so that I can maybe add something else here, you know, later on and that is what I will be doing right through the playthrough, just adding, you know, to the town and yeah, at the end of the playthrough I think this place will look really, really good and I'm sure our character will look really, really good. And now we're just going to connect the power line. So there it is. It's already active. I'm just going to put it off and on again. And that's going to produce um, 10 water for us. Okay. So every now and then we can come back to the settlement. And in our workshop, 
um, chest you know there will be purified water which we can use which is going to be extremely important for us because every time we use a stump pack you know we're going to have to drink water and yeah the other thing that i'm going to do now is just uh, make a, a water pump okay which i mean i'm not you know i don't want to run to the workshop every single time so this um, water pump is going to help us a lot that we can fill up all the bottles that we collect in the world because if you fill up a bottle with the water pump a pump an empty bottle that is going to be purified water and yeah we want to get to work make sure we finish everything so you'll be seeing here every single um, bottle that you collect okay you can come fill up um, by a water pump and there are other water pumps throughout the world and you can just always fill up these these water bottles because you don't really want to drink or eat anything that gives you radiation okay um, the chances of you getting infected with some kind of disease or infection is quite high and you're going to need antibiotics to heal that you know every single time and i'm not going to rush um diamond city in this playthrough because i want to show you guys step for step what locations we must cover to have the smoothest playthrough possible and not sit in a situation where the enemies are you know the enemy's level is way higher than ours okay and then we take forever to kill them but they can kill us in two seconds okay so the route that we're gonna take i have learned through tons of research and i will be showing you the perfect route where we make sure that the enemies we face are always within our level cap okay because every single area on the map has a level cap so where we start is in the northwest and the further you move um southeast okay the more difficult it gets so we're definitely going to um, focus on that and you guys will see this will be a fantastic playthrough and with a heck of a lot of action and i can't wait to show you guys the immersive mods so we've covered the water now behind our workshop or the workshop building you can get these three plants here um, and then you all you do is you take this the uh, melons and the good that you got and just plant three extra ones okay because every um npc like the minute men that are going to stay here if you assign an npc to a crop they will be able to handle six crops okay i don't know if it's different with the game of the year, year edition you know with all the dlcs but according to my knowledge if i assign an npc to one crop you know then they'll make sure that they cover at least six crops and this is what this gives us okay we we've got the three that we um harvested and then we planted the three extra ones and those six crops will be more enough you know more than enough for the settlement and now um we've cleared the two plots out you know with the broken down houses and there's a lot of people you know that tell you to build a bunch of crap to level up faster this is a passion project of mine guys so immersion is very very important to me and just hear the storm you know this the storm that you are hearing now with the rain and the thunder that is because of the true storms mod okay all the mods on this playthrough are for immersion you know to pull us into the storyline and to make you know to make us enjoy our experience more nothing makes it easier for us you know and nothing breaks the vanilla experience unfortunately a lot of other mods you know do make things harder but makes other things much more difficult as well and yeah we got 21 experience just by building this prefab and yeah you can you can build your own structure but guys you know this prefab is more than enough i think at the front i'll either build one more of these or you know i'll show you guys the other prefab with steel but just listen when the storm slows down
Now, is that awesome or what? Okay. Um, <laughs> the storms are so realistic. You struggle to hear NPCs when they're talking to you. So try and not talk to NPCs, you know, when a storm is going on. Um, but yes, the second um, level up that we're going to do is strong back. Okay. Um, I have planned my build for a long time, so I'm going to do Demolition Expert as soon as we get the Perception Bobblehead from Concord, because the Punisher, which is the character that we're playing, which is based on the first Punisher movie, um, is very, very good with explosives, okay? That you will see in the movie, and it's a really, really cool movie. But yeah, um, we... We got a nice, you know, look at this, guys. It's beautiful, okay? Yes, you can build your own thing and spend a lot of time on it, but I want to give you guys gameplay, okay? I want to give you guys story, immersion, you know, um, plot plot lines and characters, you know, and a lot, a lot of action. That's, that's definitely what we're going to focus on, a heck of a lot of action. So... We're going to make a door, and I have got a mod which allows me to lock doors. I'm not going to lock any doors except my house's door, okay? Even in the Punisher movie, uh, Frank Castle doesn't like, you know, isn't crazy about being bothered, you know, and he's got a lot of shit in there, just like we'll have a lot of shit in our house. We'll have our own safes and everything where we keep our loot and organize our loot nicely, and we do not want NPCs to just walk into our house and come sleep on our bed okay the only npc that's going to be allowed in our house is dog meat okay because he's our best friend so yeah um i will be locking my doors so that they don't use my bed and i'm gonna build them beds now and yeah if you guys want to know how many beds you must make in the beginning it's only five people okay so you just have to build five beds I'm going to put two downstairs, okay? I don't, there is a couple, okay? Um, so, yeah, I'm going to put two beds down. Whether the couple uses these two beds is up to them. On, uh, at the top, I'm going to put one bed. And then at our workshop house, I'm going to put two beds for the old lady and whoever else wants to use the other bed. But, yes... This is really a, a fun part of the game. I must say, you can really have a heck of a lot of fun, you know, um, building your settlements. I've seen really, really cool settlements. Um, but yeah, I like I said, I'm not going to, you know, install mods that changes the vanilla experience. There are a lot of mods that makes baseball extremely easy for people. And, you know, if you're, you know, if you're still a Sims fan, then sure, you know, go crazy. But again, for me, it's all about immersion. So we're going to place that last bed there. I'm not really bothered about that entrance. And now we're going to go to our workshop here. And we're going to place the bed for the old lady. And I'm still wondering if I'm going to give her enough chems that she falls over. I'm going to have to decide that because... We'll, we'll see how much experience you know her quest gives us down the line. And that, you know, then we'll decide if we're going to give her enough chems, you know, for to fall down. But yeah, that's the five beds. Okay, so that's definitely sorted out. There's actually six beds. We only need five, but they're not going to use our bed. And look here, circuitry one. Okay, gears two. Oil. That's what I was talking about. Gears you need, you know. Um, circuitry you need for your guns, you know. So... Um, if you really, really want to make a turret, make a turret, okay? But four of these guard towers is going to be more than enough, okay? I normally build about eight right around town, but that's just because I know sometimes the, um, you know, the raids or when they attack, you know, your settlement, they come you know, from all angles or sometimes they even just spawn in the middle of town, but... Again, it's about immersion. So according to Frank Castle, the Punisher, um, you know, he thinks the only way that that they can get in is the the way he got in, okay? The entrance that he came in. And then he's going to block off, you know, or put guard, um, guard towers at the breach, okay? Because he doesn't know how AI works. 
in the game. And yeah, I already scrapped all these um, light poles, but just check the resources that you can get from these light poles, guys. Rubber, fuse, you know, and a broken light. If you want to keep them, keep them, you know, but um, I'll build cooler, I'll build cooler lights for us, you know, later down the line. Make our town look really cool. But yeah, this is basically just to speed things up, you know. I don't want to be running up and down for them um, after I've saved them, you know. So this might make the video a bit longer, but I'm just showing you guys, you know, what to do without running up and down. So that's basically it. We solved the water, we solved the food, we solved the beds, and we solved the defenses, okay? And that's all we need to do for now. This guy's got shotgun cell shells plus a shotgun, okay? And two stim packs, and he's going to give us the armor, okay? The clothing that we need to have at least uh, 10 damage resistance. And damage resistance is extremely important. To give it to you in a nutshell, if a gun does 10 damage and you've got 10 damage resistance, it's only going to do 5 damage to you, okay? So it reduces it with 50%. But in any case, we've done our job, it's night time, we've worked our butt off. So if you like this series, if you like this video, do me a favor and click that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed yet and want to follow, you know, my, my playlists, just click that subscribe button, that bell button to be notified of future videos, guys. This Luthias, this is going to be an awesome playthrough and an awesome guide. See you guys later and have a fantastic weekend.